Uh, we hear there's and and honestly, there's a lot written about him. There's a lot of stories about him that we can learn for to apply to our lives today. But this Joseph, um, there's very few scriptures about him, and so it's it's really been a challenging message for me because I love to use a lot of scripture. Um, I like to back up uh, my opinions with scripture. That's that's probably a good thing to do, isn't it? Um, but there's just not a lot about him. And then it, it struck me also interesting that you know God had, would give me this message to talk about Joseph, the father of Jesus, um, and my dad's name was Joseph. Um, somehow we, we got to talking about my family last week. We went out to dinner with Dr. Yang and, and his wife and had a great discussion, and we talked about stuff, and um, I was just so impressed with him. We are going to have him back, by the way, on a Sunday morning, uh, one Sunday morning to preach for us, and it was just dynamic. And but I was just so amazed and thought about it. it didn't really seem to have a lot of uh, relation, maybe, to this message. But thinking about the early church and the hunger that they had for Jesus, you know, and these folks in China today that are dying to just have a Bible have so much hunger for Him that we just don't have. And it's really because we don't need God. And, and for some of you, this is your first time you're here, you're like, is this a Christian church? It's like, it is. But I just believe in being real with you and transparent and honest. We don't really need God a lot of times, do we? We've got jobs. Uh, we've got the government. You know, uh, to take care of us. Right? Where's Sean when I need him to hit those... But really, we, we have it pretty well, don't we? Most of us own a car, or two, or three, or four, and a truck, right? We have a house that doesn't leak, most of us. Not everybody. I'm not saying we've all got it made. But do you know that we are considered, if, if you have a car, you are considered in the top 2% of the wealthiest people in the world. Isn't that amazing? And you go, I don't feel very wealthy. But honestly, if you went around the world, if you went to Haiti, if you went to Africa, or even in places in China, they would tell you, you are very, very wealthy. We just don't feel that way. That's just a little sermonette for you. Uh, no extra charge for that. Joseph's Christmas vacation. Why vacation? Because he did a lot of traveling. The first little part we read about Jesus he did a lot of traveling. I'm going to ask you to do something different. Today's the day for different things, I guess. I'm going to ask you to stand. I've got some scripture I want to read. They'll put it up on the board if you don't have a Bible. From Matthew chapter 1. We're going to read this together. And the reason is, I believe that we should respect the Word of God. I said, I think we should respect the Word of God. I don't know how y'all feel, but we should respect the Word of God. We should reverend it. Yeah. And in the Old Testament days, when they read from the Torah, from the Scripture, they had all the people stand in reverence to the Word. And so we're going to do that this morning. Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 18, says, This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. Which, is, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, God, for the willingness that you would have your word preserved for us thousands of thousands of years and that we have free access to your word this morning. We thank you, God, for the blessing, the gift, of your holy word this morning. And we just want to respect it and honor it and let it do what you designed it to do, to speak to us, to change us, that we would apply it to our lives today. We allow you this morning, we ask you, God, to open up our eyes and our hearts to your word 
And do what only you can do, Holy Spirit, in the reading of your word, in the preaching of your word, and through your Holy Spirit. And the church said, Amen. You can be seated. Isn't it amazing that we've already heard from the prophet Isaiah this morning, and here we hear Matthew talking about it again. And we didn't plan that. Y'all might think, oh, Donna and Mark talked about it. We didn't. I didn't know she was going to do that. I didn't know Ron was, was thinking about reading that same scripture. God knows what he's doing, doesn't he? He sure does. Interesting, this group of scriptures, when we start thinking about Joseph, who was the father, stepfather, you could say, let's just say what it is, what, what, what you'd want to call it. He wasn't his natural father. God was his father. But the scripture says that while Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, that she was found to be with child. Now I find that word interesting. Found. It was like she didn't tell it. I don't know. But it was like it was found out. You ever heard that somebody was pregnant when they weren't expected to be pregnant? You know, kids or whatever. And they were found to be pregnant. And so that word is almost scandalous when you start thinking about it. She was found to be with child. And so my immediate thought as a man is, so what's Joseph going to do about it? You know, his wife, or supposed to be wife, is pregnant and it's not his. Uh-oh. You know? What would you do? Men, what would you do? You know, if you found out you're, not, you're about to be married to your wife and suddenly she says, Honey, we need to have a little talk. I'm going to have a baby. And you know... It's not yours. Let me tell you something, honey. It's, it's not yours, but God spoke to me. Think about it. And said He's going to somehow have this baby in me and He's going to be Jesus. And the, you know what that word means? It means the, the Lord saves. And, and, and Joseph's going, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just He thought exactly what all of us would thought. Would have thought, whatever. They didn't use the word whatever back then, but it was probably in a Hebrew word, whatever. You know, whatever. Something like, I don't know. You know Hebrew, you've got to speak Hebrew with phlegm. I got phlegm today. I've been kind of under the weather, so I could probably do good on Hebrew today. So it says she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit, but then it says because Joseph, her husband... I don't know if you can put that back up. It says, Joseph, her husband. So this is not saying she's pledged to be married to him. And we go back to last week. We talked a little bit about the Scripture and what it really meant. They were really already married. They just hadn't consummated the, the wedding, had the marriage yet. So he was her husband. But it says he was a righteous man and didn't want to dis expose her to public disgrace. This is really where I want to camp out today. Joseph was a righteous man. He was an honorable man. He was a good man. We don't know a lot about him, but the Scripture is clear that he was a good man and didn't want to embarrass her. Now, he could have. When you go back and you read the Scripture, you go back to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 24, says that a man could divorce his wife if he found anything that was displeasing about her. Aren't you ladies glad we don't live in that culture today? Aren't you men glad we don't live in that culture today? If he found anything displeasing or indecent about her, he could divorce her like that. No lawyers, no courts, no nothing. Just go away, we're done. And she had no, no recourse, she had no resources, she had no way to make a living. She would just basically be put out. But Joseph was a righteous man, he was a good man honorable man and he didn't want to embarrass her so it says he was going to divorce her but he was going to do it quietly there's the thought that at this point joseph just didn't buy her story you know he loved her i'm sure but he just couldn't i just can't how can i believe this is really true i know you've never lied before you know you're a good woman but how you know how and then it goes on to say that Joseph, who was the son of David, which is really, really important to this story, that doesn't mean that he was King David's son, but he was a descendant of King David. This angel came to Joseph and said, she really is pregnant with the Holy Spirit. And you need to take her as your wife. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to do that. And you name him Jesus, 
which is basically the, the derivative of the word Joshua, which means the Lord saves. So Jesus is not just a name. It has a meaning. It's, it's who He is. He is the Lord and He saves. That's who Jesus is. Not just because we say it. His name says it. The name above all names, right? Jesus only, only Jesus can save. Amazing. And then he, talk, then he goes back and talks about what the prophet Isaiah said in chapter 7, that he is going to be called Emmanuel, God with us. That God somehow sends his son himself to be with us. Amazing. Mary was found to be with child. Had these great plans, didn't they? They were going to be married. Joseph was a carpenter. You know, he had done what his ancestors had done. They had it all laid out for him. How many times have you felt like you just had a great plan laid out before you and suddenly there's a change of plans? There's suddenly a change of plans. That's what happened. Joseph's like, this is not part of my plan. But God, but God, but God. So Joseph... Here's from this angel that says, don't be afraid to take her as your, as your wife. And the thing that I love about the last part, it says that he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. He was simply obedient. Also interesting to see that it says he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son. Now, I don't have to explain what that means, do I? Please tell me I don't have to explain what that means. I don't really want to do that. Okay, good. <sighs> Joseph respected Mary so much more than I think men, let me talk to you for a minute, than when most of us do women. We haven't respected the women in our lives typically. I haven't. I'm just being honest with you this morning. I still at times don't respect Donna the way I should and reverence her and honor her the way I should. I'm so much better than I was. But Joseph put her before himself. You know? He would not do anything with her until the birth was completed. I just find that amazing. You know, the interesting part about Joseph during this time when uh, he, she came to him and told, her, told him that she was with child, he didn't see her for a while. If you read in, chap- in Luke, it says that he went, she went to visit uh, uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, I, I'm on drugs this morning, just in case y'all are wondering. Uh, they're prescription and over-the-counter drugs for my head. Not, not anything serious, but... I'm not 100% today. Uh, but can we edit that part out of the video? <laughs> anyway, um, so she went to visit Elizabeth, and Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist, who was Jesus' cousin. It's a really neat story. But, so she spent time, basically three months, with Elizabeth until it was time for John to be born, and then she comes back. And so you guys know, if you've been away from somebody who's pregnant for three months, they look a lot different when they come back. Right? And so when she came back, she looked a lot different. But anyway, it says that Joseph was a righteous man. He was an honorable man. And then he did what the angel commanded. I think it's also interesting that when the angel talked to Joseph, he went back to what the prophet Isaiah had said. He went back 28 generations. And he told Joseph, you're going to name this son Jesus according to the prophet. Now that may not mean anything to you, but I'll be willing to bet if you start thinking about it, at some point back in your life, God went back to a place where He made you a promise. And he went back with Joseph and he told Joseph, son of David, remember the promise I made to to King David that you would forever have an heir on the throne. Forever and ever and ever. And he reminded Joseph of that promise. And I'm reminded this morning of the promises that God's made to me. And I want to remind you of the promises that God's made to you way back in the day. But some of you have so far, it's been so long ago that you've forgotten about it. Or you've chosen 
to think that it can't happen anymore. Maybe you've thought that, you know, you wish something would happen, that this healing would happen, or this, this relationship would be fixed, or something great would happen, or even a physical healing like we saw in the video. Maybe there's family members that you wish would, would get a touch from God and, and, and have a relationship with Him, and, and it's been so long that you've almost given up. You've almost resigned yourself to the fact that it's too late, it's been too long ago, there's no way God can do this. But I'm telling you this morning that God would like to remind you of that promise He made to you a long time ago. And that He can still fulfill that promise. And He will fulfill that promise. He hasn't forgotten about it. His memory is not bad like mine. He's remembering everything that He's ever promised you and He will fulfill it. Yeah. Give Him praise this morning. And most of it, pretty much all of it, has nothing to do with us, but Joseph was still an honorable man. Let's go on to Matthew chapter 2. Now this is where the Magi we talked about last week had come and visited Jesus, brought gifts, and then they left. And this says, when the Magi had, when they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Now that's, that, from that prophet is Hosea. Now at this point we have no evidence, according to the scripture, that the angel spoke to Mary anymore. What we see according to the scripture is because of Joseph's obedience the angel of the Lord, the Lord Himself, came back and spoke to Joseph. Now, that may not be meaningful to you, but it's very meaningful to me. When you're obedient to God, He will talk to you. And many of you would say, I haven't heard from God in so long. I wish I could hear from God. My question for you is, are you being obedient to Him? Are you trusting Him? Are you, are you being righteous in His sight? Meaning, just doing what He asks you to do, even the simple things. And if you're not, then I'm, I'm just going to tell you straight out this morning, it's going to be really hard for him to speak to you because you haven't listened to him already. And he's thinking, I, I don't know what God's thinking. I guess I think like I do. I'm thinking if, if you're not listening to me the first time, why should I come back and talk to you the second time? You haven't done what I told you to do a long time ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But that's just the way I see it. You know, when God called me to do this, I hated it. I didn't want to do this. I didn't. I ran from it for a long time. And I was angry and miserable. You can go back and watch the old her sermons. I've shared this before. But God didn't move on. He didn't say, okay, Mark, since you don't want to do that, how about this? Don't want to do that? Well, how about this? He never does that. In my experience and people I've talked to, God always goes back to the very first commandment He gives you. The first test He gives you and says, when you do that, then we'll talk about the next thing. But until you do that, we're not going to move on. And so my question is, what's the first thing God told you to do? What's the very first thing He asked you to be obedient about? And if you haven't been, I'm challenging you that He probably won't move on. You may be a rare occasion, but He probably won't move on until you do that thing. But once you do that, this is what we see with Joseph. The Lord comes back and starts speaking. He starts talking clearly to Joseph. And He says, take them. Take your family. And then he says, I love it, he says, until I tell you, meaning I'm going to come back and talk to you some more. You know, you do this, I'm going to come back. Don't worry, we're going to keep talking. You just do what I tell you to do, and we'll keep talking. I'll come back and tell you when it's okay. I love that part of that. And what did Joseph do? It says that during the night, he got him up and took him. It's like, okay, in the morning when we wake up, we'll go. No, now. Now. Wake up, we're getting out of here. Delayed obedience is disobedience. You got to do it now. When God says do it, don't wait. Don't hesitate. Do it now. It might feel weird. You might think this is going to be so awkward. I'm really uncomfortable. I've never done this before. I'm sweating, hyperventilating, but I got to do it. I got to be obedient. Just be obedient. And that's when God says, All right, good. Now we're tracking. Now we're tracking. We can keep talking. I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk to you some more. And that's exactly what Joseph found out. The other thing is that he gave him a specific message. He told him exactly where to go. Exactly. And he said, I'll be back and I'll tell you what to do next. There's a specific role 
for each and every one of us who are followers of Jesus Christ. And this, this may be your first time here. You may be visiting. You may have a home church. That's awesome. I'm not asking you to come here. I'm asking you to serve God where God's called you to serve. This church is just one of a great many great churches in our community. We don't have all the answers. We don't have all the perfect programs. We certainly don't have the perfect preachers. It's just the, we're just one. And we want to be a part of the community that serves God and be obedient. And that's when awesome things will happen. But all of us, listen, every single one of us from the youngest to the oldest has a specific role. We all have something specific for us to do. And if you're obedient, God will tell you what that is. I've heard many, many students, teenagers, and even young adults and even older adults will say, I just don't know God's will for my life. You need to be obedient to Him. Jesus said, believe in the one that God the Father sent. That's your job. And when you start doing that, God will speak to you. And so there was a specific role. He gave him a specific message. And Joseph obeyed immediately. Let's go on and read more in Matthew chapter 2. Uh, verse 19 through 23 says, After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life were dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Then it says, Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. So we see in this scripture that once again, because of Joseph's obedience, God spoke to him. He came once again and spoke to him and said, okay, now I need you to go back to Israel. And so you say, well, he wasn't obedient. He took him to Nazareth. But it says he was warned in a dream. So we see two times in this set of scriptures that God spoke to Joseph, telling him, go here. And then he found out Archelaus, who was much more brutal than his father Herod at the time, he was kind of afraid and the angel came to him again and warned him and said, okay, go to Nazareth. We'll take care of two birds with one stone. You'll be safe and you will fulfill prophecy. So Joseph's obedience, don't miss the monumentality of this whole thing. Because of Joseph, so many scriptures were fulfilled. So many prophecies were fulfilled because of this little known carpenter. I think it's awesome. Joseph obeyed and honored God. And in turn, God honored him. Let me tell you, God will do the same with you. If you honor God in all that you do, I promise you, He will honor you. If you obey God, He will speak to you. He will use you. He will open up doors for you. He will do things in your life that will blow your mind and may amaze you beyond belief. But it does start with you. You have to be obedient to Him. You have to seek Him. And you have to start asking the question, what will honor God? David, if you guys will come. Joseph, how, you know, now, nowadays you go, you know, uh, St. Joseph's Hospital, anybody, I don't know if anybody's ever been there. There's so many hospitals, there's so many places named after Joseph, and we know him as St. Joseph. This little known guy who was just obedient, didn't want any attention, didn't want any fanfare, didn't want any recognition. He simply took care of his family. He took care of his wife and his son. And look what happened. And I've thought many times, that maybe you have at times in Scripture, what would have happened? What would have happened if Joseph had not been obedient? It doesn't matter what would have happened. Because we see in Joseph a man who was obedient to everything God told him to do. And so we know what happened. Prophecy was fulfilled. The Savior of the world was brought in. And we have freedom from our sin today because of Him. Because He trusted, obeyed, and honored God. So my question for you is, are you honoring God? I'm going to ask you to stand. And they're going to play a song. You guys can sing it. I guess it's a song we can sing too. You can sing along. 
or you can come to the front. The altars will be open. If you need prayer, there'll be a prayer team here that is willing to pray with you. Miss Donna, I would, if you wouldn't mind, would you come front and let us pray for you um, this week? Anybody else, you just need time with God. But here's what I want to ask you, more importantly than anything else. In every situation of your life, I want to challenge you, actually, to ask the question, what would honor God in this situation? What would honor God in this situation? In my job, in my marriage, with my kids, with my parents, at the restaurant, at, at church even, during Christmas, when you get together with the family members that you don't really want to get together with, be honest this morning, what would honor God? And then I want to challenge you to just do that thing. Don't worry about what's going to happen next. Just honor God in that moment and trust that He will honor you because He will. That's the kind of God we serve. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much for Your Word. We thank You, God, for this story of of the man who took the responsibility of raising your child on this earth. It blows me away when I think about that. And he simply did what you asked him to do. He respected you, he obeyed you, and he honored you. And in turn, we have a historical record of what he did that we can learn from and apply to our lives today. God, for men this morning, for husbands and fathers this morning. God, I ask you to help us to have the spirit of Joseph this morning, that we would just be obedient to you and just honor you in all that we do. And same for wives and mothers, God, that we would just respect you, that we would just be obedient to you. And for those of us that are followers of Jesus this morning, Lord, that we would begin asking the question in every situation, even now in this moment, even in this very second, in this service, in this building, what would honor you, God? And then give us the courage to do that. We pray in Jesus' name. Please come.